Welcome back to the third instalment of our adventure through the Gdansk shipyards. And as the year starts to cool off, we venture into the area known as Stochnya Cezarska, the Imperial Shipyard. The area known as the Imperial Shipyard can be traced all the way back to the 14th century, when it was developed by the Order of Teutonic Knights. Now this area known as Jungstad, or the Young City, would be further developed by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth when they defeated the uh, Order of Teutonic Knights a, a century or so later. But in all fairness, the modern era of the Gdańsk shipyards can be traced back to the late 18th century, when the area was taken over by the Kingdom of Prussia. By the mid-19th century, the Royal Prussian Navy began to produce battleships here, and it grew to become the largest shipyard in Europe. Then, in 1871, the German states federated, and the Royal Prussian shipyard became the Kaiserliche Werft Danzig, Stochnia Cezarska, or in English, the Imperial Shipyard of Gdańsk. The Imperial Shipyard gave us many of the buildings that we still see here today, albeit in slightly worse condition than their glory days. But make no mistake, this was once a powerhouse of ship production, and the German Navy was even producing U-boats here in World War I. The end of World War I also saw the city of Gdańsk, or Danzig in its German equivalent, becoming a free city-state. And with that, the Kaiserliche Werft became the Danziger Werft. In 1939, Adolf Hitler decides to invade Poland. And as part of the same campaign, he takes the free city of Danzig. And the shipyard area here falls under the control of the Third Reich. Then, in 1945, the Soviet Red Army liberates the city, and for all intents and purposes, Gdańsk is a part of Poland once again, albeit under a communist regime. This is the setting in which the Solidarity Movement takes place. You can uh, see more about that in another video. And in 1989, finally, democratic elections take place, and with the introduction of capitalism and some other bits and pieces, ironically, the Gdansk shipyards start to experience a decline in its production schedule. Thus, we have the shipyards as we know it in the 21st century. The last little point in this history lesson is the fact that this area, for the longest amount of time, was not open to the public. But in 2020, that changed, and it's now kind of a tourist route, point by point with signage and stuff. And if you're like me and you're looking for something a little bit more in a historic European city, this is the kind of place to visit. And so, my friends, at this stage, what you're really wanting to know is, well, what is there exactly to do in this area? Well, behind me, we have Zhurav M3, one of the old shipyard cranes, and it's been turned into a panoramic viewpoint. Now, unfortunately, in the colder seasons, it's not open, but I highly encourage you to uh, go up there and take a look around when it is open in the warmer seasons. Just around the corner from Zhurav M3, we have Ulitsa Nazhenjovtsov, or Toolmaker's Street. Nazhenjovtsov used to be the heart of the old shipyard area. Particularly in the 20th century, this is where uh, the focus on engine building took place. So these buildings used to house foundries, uh, mechanical workshops, and tool storage areas, which I believe is where the street got its name from. And actually today, uh, there is still a lot of shipbuilding work going on. So, since it's open to the public, you can actually get up and close to some of these workshops. You can see the characteristic red brick architecture, which the Prussians love to build stuff with the red brick. Um, even down here in this side alley, we'll go down quickly, and you can see some even more uh, characteristics of uh, Prussian architecture. Lots of red archways. It's gonna be really interesting to see what happens in the future with this, uh, with this space. I mean, listen, hopefully they will continue using it for shipbuilding, but if not, well, dare I say, I see some potential here. Now keep in mind, it's not just about shipbuilding here because there are still a lot of derelict spaces, in which case they've actually been taken up and used as art exhibition spaces. Check out these doors, solid. Imagine if you opened a nightclub in that one, that'd be great. To be honest, I'm actually really surprised that I'm allowed to go this far, but I can see signage for the tourist route, so I suppose it's all good. Okay, so behind me here is the locksmith building where Solidarity hero 
Anna Valentinovic used to work as a crane operator. Um, and obviously it's still in use. And here is the marina, which used to be the dock basin. Mm. Just a little bit further down from here, we have the WL4 art space. Just a few hundred meters down. This little area here used to be known as Milch Peter, apparently named after an inn and a wharf. Fast forward to the 21st century and Milch Peter is now WL Chtere. Uh, an art space. You get the vibe here that it's kind of like a really weird sort of trailer park space for frustrated uh, industrial artists. Anyway, I'm going to try and peek inside, see what's happening. Just for the record, I have sprung in here without notice, so the gentleman informed me that if you want to come to this place and check it out, um, best to check on Facebook for what exhibitions are happening, so you've been forewarned. Okay. Now we're going to uh, head back up Nazhenziovtsov. There's two more buildings that we're going to check out. The first one is the Shipyard Directorate building over here. This place featured in a lot of photos from August of 1980, especially with Lech Wałęsa being carried by his colleagues. I know the Consul General's office of Hungary is located in this building, but uh, I'm not sure if it's used for other spaces. And to finish things off, we're going to stop here. Mielzinski Wine Spirit Specialties. It's a bar and restaurant that specializes in wine, and it's actually located in the former fire department building for the shipyard. And there's some other cool touches, like they've still got the fire pole going down from the first to the bottom level. And it's a very schmick place to grab a bite to eat as well. We'll continue our adventure through the Gdansk shipyards in our next video. In the meantime, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just don't forget to click the bell for notifications. And you can join the Gdansk In Your Pocket community on Facebook and Instagram. And finally, if you're planning on visiting Gdansk and you want to come to the shipyards, you can do a self-guided walking tour in our premium city guide from Gdansk in your pocket. All you have to do is head to the link. And until next time, my friends, do zobaczenia i do widzenia.